Good morning, afternoon, everyone. Uh, waiting to get a couple more people in here. Uh, we'll get started here soon. Make sure we got everyone. All right, looks like we got Dan in here. Got Robert. So I guess to uh, give everyone the breakdown of how we're going to do this AMA today, um, first things first, we want to introduce Ichi um, and what they'll be doing for the Fuse ecosystem and, and, and what we've just launched with their uh, Angel Vault. And uh, then we'll kind of let everyone know what's new in the Fuse ecosystem, um, applications that have launched here recently, and what we're looking to do in the future. And then from there, we'll open up the floor to anyone who has questions. And how we'll do questions is we'll open up the chat. You can ask your question in the chat, and I'll feed it to either Robert or uh, Dan, more than likely, on the Ichi side. Dan, you can uh, come on off of mute and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. If I don't know if they gave you permission. Hold on. Ben, are you with us? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, loud and clear. There we go. Awesome. All right, all right. Uh, Dan, is anyone going to be joining uh, else from the Ichi side, or is it just going to be solo you? There will be a few more people joining in a minute. Okay, cool. All right, perfect. Um, let's give uh, Carl permission to. Um, yeah. All right, uh, to get started, I want to introduce everyone who's on the call first. Um, you can start with the Ichi team. It looks like we got Ben in there as well. Um, so, but we'll start with Daniel. Daniel, kind of introduce yourself and explain, you know, what your role is over at Ichi. Um, and, and give us a background for, for the uh, listeners. Hey, everyone. Uh, super happy to be here. Uh, so I'm Daniel. I'm on the Ichi team, uh, working mostly on, uh, you know, building out our angel vaults on the product side and working with some of our partners to implement those uh, and, and kind of grow our network. So Super excited to be here. Been working with uh, Mark and the Fuse team and Zach here uh, for a little while now since launching uh, the One Fuse token back in July. Uh, so excited to uh, take the next step with the Angel Vault and and uh, build out the ecosystem with you all. Awesome. Uh, so appreciate you being here too. This is this is a very very impactful day. Um, just to be able to kind of announce what's going on. And I uh, appreciate you taking the time to come on this AMA. Um, next up from the Ichi team, Ben. Hey, everybody. I am Ben. I work on the marketing team over at Ichi, um, putting on events like this. Really excited to hear more about um, next steps, ongoing initiatives, and the future of Fuse and Ichi. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. Uh, over to the Fuse team, we'll have uh, Carl and Robert. So we'll start off with Rob. Thank you, Zach. Uh, hello, all. Many of you know me. Um, I deal with marketing. Fuse, I've been involved with the project since DeFi summer 2020. Um, so a while now. Having a having a ball, but yeah, I deal with marketing, building up the content, um, and just generally sort of helping lead the project from a strategic um, from a strategic point of view. Um, personally, been in the space for five years or so now in uh, in, in crypto and, and, and blockchain, um, and very excited about what's to come here with this 
particular collaboration with Ichi, but also generally what's happening within the uh, within the entire space and in the Fuse ecosystem. Awesome, appreciate that, Rob. Um, Carl, let's uh, let's hear it for Carl. Thanks, Zach. Um, yeah, so Carl with the Fuse team uh, work primarily on business development, so it can be things around interoperability or you know looking for the right listings or the right partners. Um, now, probably a specific question you might want to ask me, but let's let's avoid that question later on. But you know, here to answer anything that, that you might have in terms of how how does Fuse grow, how does the ecosystem grow, and what the plans for the ecosystem in the future. Awesome. All right, so I guess to get into what we have on the agenda today, um, I want to hear more from Dan about the uh, Angel Vaults. You know, what what was the idea behind creating Angel Vaults, and what is the benefit to um, you know, tokens in, in in particular fuse the fuse uh, vault. Yeah, sure. So um, I think we can start back in July when we really built the uh, one fuse branded dollar for the fuse community, um, and the idea there was to build out a stable asset that really locked in value for the fuse community and allowed them to uh, you know, be able to spend these, these branded dollars in a way uh, across all of, their, all of DeFi uh, and create a treasury full of fuse, removing fuse from uh, the market and really creating this sort of protocol lock liquidity for the community. Now, with that, uh, we have now kind of released these angel vaults. And what they really do is provide price protection for the Fuse token. Now, what I mean by that is if you go to Uniswap um, V3, you know that there is this, uh, this idea of concentrated liquidity. And really what the Angel Vault does is take a bunch of one Fuse that is deposited into, uh, into the vault and create a buyer of last resort, this buy wall that helps depeg the uh, fuse price from Ethereum and creates these buyers of last resort. So as the pressure to sell fuse comes in, in case you know the Ethereum price starts to dip, uh, we start the the Angel Vault itself uses one fuse to buy a bunch of fuse and stop it from uh, kind of going down. So that's the very high level idea behind these uh, behind these Angel Vaults. Awesome. I appreciate the description. Um, everyone who's new to the Fuse ecosystem or hasn't heard of Ichi yet, uh, I hope Daniel kind of clarified and we'll also open up the floor to questions later. So if you have any specifics on how exactly the Angel Vaults um, work and if you haven't been over to the website, we'll definitely plug that here later. Um, uh, over to Rob. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rob, I, I uh, want to kind of touch on... A, the Fuse ecosystem as a whole right now in some of the major applications or uh, D apps that are, that are coming to um, Fuse network right now. What do you think is the most promising outside of Ichi? Uh, I want to kind of touch on that a little bit and just, just, just to let the, the listeners know what's really in the works because it's, it's not apparent how much we really have going on just yet. Yeah. So I think the, um, the things I've realized with, with Fuse is, you know, we're building, we're building infrastructure for, for, for decentralized finance and payments. And you look at what's happening with the, the platform itself right now, the blockchain itself, the DeFi um, plays that are developing within the Fuse ecosystem. Um, it, might sound, it might sound strange to say, but ultimately it's all a means to an end, right? And the end is taking um, this technology, which is powerful and um, which is, is designed to serve the, you know, to, to serve a, a, a wider, um, you know, to serve, serve the widest possible population in the best possible way. Um, that's what we're really trying to do with Fuse. We're really trying to take the, the power of DeFi, the power of decentralized payments to, um, to the mainstream. So things to be watching um, the, the, the killer app Fuse Cash, which is part of the 
Fusefy DAO, which is part of the DAO we have created to take um, DeFi to the mainstream. So, um, you know, be ultra focused on what's happening with Fuse Cash in particular. Um, some of the integrations and features that we're uh, integrating into that whole um, product suite, um, such as on ramping solutions for um, different parts of the world. We're very strong in Europe right now, in particular with Ramp Network, which is a European company, but which recently, I apologize for the noise, by the way, um, I'm in a, in a public place, um, but Ramp Network, which is of course a European company, a strong partner of ours, but which recently launched on the US market. Um, so it's gonna make, make it much, much easier for US citizens to onboard directly into uh, into the Fuse ecosystem, basically, to, to, to use their bank account, wire transfer, uh, debit card, Apple Pay, to uh, onboard or to, to, to do fear onboarding directly into the Fuse ecosystem, into FuseFi and Fuse Cash in particular. Um, and then another big partnership, which is expected to um, close shortly for the Southeast Asian market and the Indian market, um, which will allow us to do exactly the, exactly the same thing. So eyes on Fuse Cash, which is ultimately, you know, how do we take this technology to the mainstream, the answer is mobile. It's mobile technology, it's not going anywhere. Um, mobile, use, mobile use is growing massively. By doing well with Fuse Cash and by building Fuse Cash well and having a, a, an app which is, um, which is you know, extremely easy to use, um, the idea being to really have a, a Venmo or a Robin Hood or a Revolut if you're in Europe um, type experience, um, and you know, which is a FinTech experience essentially, um, but built on top of the blockchain, right? That's what we're trying to do with that, with, with Fuse Cash in particular. And um, by doing that, other projects which are building on Fuse, such as People Eat, um, Flambu, um, the, the project in, uh, in, in Curacao, so Collect Collective Labs or the Curadi project, um, they're, all, they're all able to leverage this mobile technology, this mobile um, sort of centric um, infrastructure in order to be able to do exactly the same thing for their own. Um, particular communities. So the North Star for us always comes back to that, right? We always come back to the technology stack, the um, the, the, the base layer essentially, which is the blockchain itself, the Fuse network, um, the middle layer, which is a lot of stuff that no one really sees, but it's all the middleware technology, which is being built, um, which makes it really easy for us to, um, for, for, for us and for developers and entrepreneurs to build mobile applications on top of Fuse. Um, and then, of course, the general, um, you know, the general DeFi play, essentially, which is all about driving as much liquidity as possible for the network um, and driving asset diversity. And obviously, stable coins play a very, very key role within that. And by working with projects like Ichi, we're able to, um, we're able to do stable coins in a way which is much more um, decentralized, um, protocol owned, as described, um and in a way which is you know provides more st uh, more, more sustainability long term which is really really sort of fits with the with the ethos of what we're trying to do with uh with decentralized technology so stable coins are a uh, um you know it's a, it's a top three focus for uh, the fuse ecosystem what we're trying to do with the mainstream awesome i appreciate the in-depth uh conversation there rob you you i think you hit all bases um and you gave us a really good overview on what Fuse is focused on and how the different mobile applications, uh, obviously FuseFi and the DeFi hub we have there, um, how they interact within each other and ultimately what, what our goal is. To, I guess, push back over to the Ichi side, um, uh, Ben or Daniel can, can chime in on this one. Uh, so I, I saw you guys have a vault with um, uh, the Fox, the Shapeshift uh, token as well. Very, really curious as to can you can you give us some explanation on what's what's upcoming for Ichi? That's a pretty big name to have, you know, in tangent with uh, the Fuse, you know, network and whatnot. So if you're not comfortable with kind of leaking it, just just curious, what, what's next for you guys over there? Are you going after any more big dogs, basically? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, as we announced in cohort one, we are basically building. Um, Angel Vault's uh, Fuse was actually the first one out after the one for Ichi, so that's super exciting. Um, we do have Wing Finance and the Shapeshift community building out their vaults now. Um, and really the future is building these Angel Vaults for all communities. I think once people start to understand um, that this is like essential for 
uh, DeFi infrastructure. This is part of DeFi 2.0 and um, enabling communities to build protocol owned liquidity and kind of strengthen um, the, the security and, and belief that people have in the scarce crypto asset. Uh, everyone's going to want one. I think we, we can see the explosion uh, in the fuse price over the last few days. I think it's, uh, I, I don't know how many X at this point, um, but when the fuse vault uh, was was deployed, I think fuse was at around 30 cents. Now it's last I checked $1.20. So uh, I think it kind of speaks to a few things. It speaks to the fact that uh, these angel vaults provide more security and belief in the scarce crypto asset that is uh, basically being helped from a price protection perspective in case there's a bear market. Um, and I also think that it's going to become this essential infrastructure piece uh, for all communities um, across DeFi. So like I said, our plan is to basically build these out for a bunch of different communities, um, starting off in the Ethereum ecosystem and down the lines specifically for Fuse is, uh, you know, bridging over one Fuse to uh, the Fuse L1 uh, and even creating angel vaults for communities on Fuse in the future. Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely second, second that um, bringing, bringing one Fuse over officially um, as a usable uh, stable coin on, on, on Fuse Network is something I'm also very, uh, very excited about. I, I apologize, everyone. I just saw our CEO pop in here. Uh, Mark, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you'd like to, you know, say a few words, I'm sure the, the crowd would love to hear it. Um, if we could get Mike, uh, if we can get, uh, Misha, can you allow Mark to speak here? Scratch that. I guess he's not in place to speak. Oh, well, um, maybe we can get him on here later. Um, I guess uh, so I had uh, one more question for, for Carl, then we'll open up the floor for anyone who wants to uh, ask questions in the uh, Telegram group. And we'll we'll kind of uh, go through as many as we hey can. Guys. Oh, there we go, Mark. Yes, I tried uh, to join uh, at least in the end, uh, better late than never. Uh, for reception, but now it's better. How's it going? It's going great, man. I'm glad to have you in here listening in. This is uh, just not, we're we're bouncing back and forth between you know what's next for Ichi, what's next for Fuse, and how we you know see our communities kind of conjoining here in the future. Uh, cool. So uh, continue. I'll, uh, I'll 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 pitch in. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so I guess um, what I had up next was uh, was gonna forward towards Carl, but you can answer it as well. Um, what what uh, applications or what teams or projects do you feel are going to be impactful in growing the Fuse ecosystem? Um, that stretches anything in terms of like game projects coming here, NFT gaming. Um, you know, we we know we just launched Artrific, which is an NFT marketplace. Um, just kind of give me your take on what you think is going to be the biggest catalyst uh, bringing applications over to the Fuse network and how we see the the ability to swap back and forth between stable coins in the Fuse uh, token will, will be implemented through, you know, something like an Ichi Vault or using Fuse Fi. Yeah. So the, the way I see it. Oh, uh, yeah. Cut out for a second. Uh, I hope we didn't lose him. Give him two seconds and uh, I can give my take if, if he's not able to come. Yeah. Yeah, you go ahead. You can go ahead, Carl. If he comes back in, we'll, we'll let him speak. Sure. So, um, you know, yeah, Robert spoke a lot to developing the infrastructure around what the Fuse ecosystem is going to be, and that, that includes being interoperable. So we, we always want to work with projects that are open source projects that can you know can multi-chain and bring their communities over to the fuse network 
um, from a gamer perspective, if you think about from the Oracle perspective, we, we looked at Future Proof with our Oracles, we looked at Oracles that are also going to produce random number generation so that we can begin to be, introduce GameFi later on as it goes through. Uh, Metaverse is something that we'll, we'll look to engage in um, as things progress. We, we're not just going to rush into it just because of the trend, we're going to find the right opportunity that's built upon the infrastructure that we put in place. Um, and it's just generally, you know, the, the goal of Fuse is, is open source. It's about infrastructure. It's about being for the 99%. Um, right now, you know, you, you have to be a, a relatively expert user to be able to interact with the DeFi landscape. And what Fuse is all about is, is yes, of course, creating all those fantastic things and being able to use the metaverse, being able to use all these things. But how, how do you how do you get, how, how does my mom and your mom, Zach, who are not the most technically savvy people in the world, use DeFi to be able to send money to each other internationally and, uh, on, a, on a cheap rate? How, how do they get to interact with that? Well, that, that's where Fuse comes in, and that's where Robert was saying, Fuse Cash, watch Fuse Cash. These kind of elements are really important. So, yes, we want to get into all, all, all the cool stuff from the DeFi side of things as well, but we, we want to be accessible, uh, and we want to onboard the next billion users to DeFi. Of course, of course. I mean, you, you mentioned how does the everyday person use uh, DeFi, and, and, like, the whole reason why I got into crypto was – in part because my brother lives in Australia. So we're figuring out how we send money back and forth while, while we're building a business in the easiest, most transparent way, fastest, cheapest way. Uh, we were sending lumens back then, back and forth between each other. So um, I think it unlocks a whole nother landscape that a lot of people didn't even imagine was possible. Um, most people are using Western Union in these old traditional ways of sending money back and forth, especially overseas. And, and it's created a block. It's created a financial burden, and it's also created a block in terms of speed. Uh, so, yeah, really, really excited about the future of yeah. of, of crypto. Just to, just, and oh, go ahead. Just to further build on what you said, there, Zach, as well, when you get into the intricacies of it, and, and you know, users are open source infrastructure for payments, you actually begin to look at jurisdictions where, let's say, for instance, access to let's say they're import exports and access to forex is not as simple as it would be in a more developed country. Well, actually, the blockchain. Uh, decentralized finance can help support that. So if, if you're a country with not great access to US dollars or, or, or something along those lines, there are solutions there that can be built upon there. You know, we're not solutions providers. We are the sandbox that can be there, but it's providing that infrastructure so that more people can have access to, to financial infrastructure. Yeah. Hey guys, guys uh, cut, cut off, I think. <laughs> yeah, go ahead if you, if you want. If you wanted to speak on, you know, what do you think is going to be the biggest catalyst for, you know, the the Fuse uh, network uh, ecosystem taking off? Yeah, no, I just uh, I, I've been uh, answering this, uh, but apparently I was I wasn't connected. There's a bad reception here. Can you hear me okay now? Much better. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I, the future, the way I see it is uh, is that people will have. Uh, more money flowing, we will see more money flowing into blockchains because people starting to realize they're a much more comfortable place to, or more accessible place to store your money. And with more options, especially in the developing world, this is something that, you know, starts to be clear and clear. And use cases that Fuse wants to facilitate are really early, Really, the, the 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 users that uh, that will use uh, those uh, systems without being necessarily investors, uh, we see different types of usage in the future where people are not paying the blockchain directly. Uh, wouldn't make sense. It's just like going to a website and paying Amazon uh, to use the the website. Uh, so there's a, there's kind of an abstraction layer that needs to be built, um, and uh, currently there's several projects that tackle it. But I would say that 99.9% .9 of, uh, of, uh, of projects on, in the crypto space are really for crypto users. And in the future, we don't see uh, you know, crypto as being you know, the objective. Uh, crypto is just a, a midterm or a short-term way to, to describe the, the phenomena, the, the, the crazy phenomena that happened. Uh, but uh, technology is a facilitator and we don't see people in the future um, you know, uh, starting to, to completely change their behavior. Uh, but slowly, just uh, the, the services will onboard to, to more open source, to public uh, infrastructure, especially in the developing world, where you don't have an alternative. Uh, everywhere, 
you know, people stop stop using cash, paper cash. Uh, those trends are larger than uh, than crypto. That money goes mobile, uh, and people basically start to you know define it differently. Uh, and uh, even uh, for gaming, for instance, it really blew off in crypto only when people realized how you can withdraw money. So uh, Philippine family withdrew uh, their axes into uh, Philippine peso. And then people realized, okay, play to earn was born. Uh, only when Axie Infinity was able to connect this, create this bridge. Uh, so the, the, the really revolutionary thing about uh, play to earn is not NFTs. Uh, that's for only one of the tools. Uh, it's really how you combine everything together uh, and, and create an open platform. Um, so, uh, you know, this family in the Philippines that did it, uh, needed to be very resource resourceful. In the future, we believe that it would be very easy and there will be a lot of service providers that will give you this. Uh, so uh, this is where Fuse uh, is, is basically positions itself. So I hope it, I hope it answers the question. Answers the question. Yeah. yeah, I just want to hop in there and say, I really love kind of where uh, Fuse's mindset is at um, around this idea of, creating an open kind of financial system, you know, in the past and, you know, even even today at this point, um, it's been very close. It's been like behind closed doors. I think Fuse is a great kind of uh, project that's going to enable these people, these unbanked people and, and people across the world to be able to transfer money very easily. And I think Ichi being kind of this infrastructure backend is going to help them do it in the best possible way. Um, you know, even even while being on the back end here, um, everything is now being done in the open. And this idea of DeFi being sort of the uh, sort of this open source, uh, easy to see uh, development of of financial infrastructure and connectivity is really what can power uh, the, the ability for all these different people to be able to use this network, transfer money in a seamless way. Um, and that's what's super exciting about it. And I, I also want to add something small about uh, the collaboration with each. I think that's really the, uh, the, the amazing Hello. thing, uh, uh, like I said before about blockchain, but really the open source uh, stack allows us to collaborate. That's really what's changing financial services uh, entirely. So you have uh, products like Ichi uh, that uh, you know you, you can you can actually look into the code. There's a high level of trust, uh, and those are things that we would never want to build ourselves. So not every project needs to build its own uh, infrastructure. Uh, like in the early days, if you want to build one thing uh, that uses crypto, you just need you know to to build a wallet, to build an explorer. I remember. Five six years ago, you wanted to, to do something, you know, to mint assets. You needed to, you know, a few millions of dollars investment. Today, you can do it in a few dollars. So this, this is how uh, those services in crypto are advancing. People don't notice it from the outside, but the fact that uh, you can do something like it is a real uh, achievement. Yeah, yeah. Do you, did uh, anyone else want to add in on either side? You guys are going uh, tit for tat there. I love, I love it. I, I call those big brain conversations when it's both both sides of the conversation are dropping very, very relevant, detailed information uh, about how they see the future, the future of finance, and the future of of, uh, of crypto. You know, and it's just, it's uh, it's amazing to have such, uh, I guess, brilliant minds building in this space. And this is what uh, the technology has allowed. Would you want to say something there, Daniel? Yeah, I was just going to say um, it's awesome to have the opportunity to speak here. And it's exciting to watch, you know, the Fuse project grow and the Ichi project grow together. I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's really fun and, and showing like the collaboration in this DeFi space, uh, enabling, you know, two companies working together um, to, to grow together. It's, it's always fun to see. Um, and I mean, it's just been exciting to watch the, uh, the fuse chart recently. <laughs> it's just been pumping and I love it. Yeah. Um, I guess now we can get into the, yeah, the, the price action lately has been, uh, been interesting to watch for sure. Um, I guess aside from 
you know, that uh, would like to get into opening up to the community. Um, want to unlock the chat and, and let anyone drop a question they have for either the Fuse team or the Ichi team. Um, and I'll try to filter through them as best as possible, as fast as possible. Um, let's let's see. Um, this is kind of an abstract one, actually. I, I'm, I'm sure Mark can uh, – I think I've actually asked this question as well when I came on board the project. So um, it, it, uh, the question is, why did we choose this name, Fuse? Um, and what message do you want to give about your project with this name? So kind of a combination between why is the logo, the logo and the name as well. Yeah. So, uh, very good question. Uh, I think, uh, branding is super important. Uh, and, uh, I believe that, uh, needs to be catchy. Uh, it needs to be short, uh, but we looked for something that is not, uh, you know, I don't know, explore Cassiopeia, uh, like different, uh, uh, Full names, uh, uh, but uh, we tried to find something really, really short. But on the other hand, we also wanted to convey uh, this uh, integration concept of, of the stack. And this is also our logo, <clears throat> which I think we'll probably uh, work on uh, very soon. We have ideas for, uh, for uh, like a, a little touch up because the, the company is not. Uh, uh, it didn't start uh, last year. We're actually working on this project for the last three years. Um, um, and we wanted to say that the stack is fused together. So there's a tech stack. Um, that people don't really know about it because Fuse is really, you know, a blockchain. It's something that uh, right now is useful mostly for developers. They, they, can, they can actually understand the, 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 the differences uh, between different stacks. And our stack is meant to be uh, working together. We wanted one one leg in the consumer side and one leg in the uh, blockchain side. And uh, this is why we insisted that we will, you know, start from bottom up from an, an L1. This is the uh, first thing we did, launched the network two and a half years ago, almost three. And uh, on top of that, we're building the, what, uh, you know, 20 years ago was like the Netscape moment or the, the browser moment. Uh, the moment that you had browsers on the internet, we started getting adoption. Before that, people used the blockchain, oh, sorry, people used TCPIP, people used IRC, people used FTP, different protocols, just like today in crypto, but they didn't have a browser, something that connects them together. And building a browser in crypto is a big problem because then you're a very small part of the value chain. Um, you know, the, 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 the fun happens behind the scenes in the contracts. So you need also to build the contracts. So Fuse is really how do we connect everything together into something reasonable without breaking compatibility, without everybody using my protocol, my API. I didn't want this uh, for Fuse. We wanted to create a, a stack that uses Ethereum, like it's HTTP, and tries to understand how to use this new type of HTTP for assets, for things uh, from everyday life. If you want to split a bill, um, you know, our understanding is how traditional payments work. We think we can build it better on, in the blockchain even today with the very early version of, of this tech. So that's that's really the, the, the idea behind the brand. Appreciate that, Mark. Um, yeah, we had a bunch of questions just flood through here. Uh, so I'll try to do my best of getting through most of them. I, I don't want to take so much time on, uh, <laughs> on uh, both Daniel and Mark's uh, day, but let me... Um, kind of filtered through. So uh, this is a really good question, question actually. So why you says, could you perhaps elaborate on your platform's native token, Ichi? Um, is it equipped with any conveniences for its owners? Uh, kind of explain like what's the, what's the, um, the uh, approach to, to why would I want to hold the Ichi token? That's for Daniel. You know. Yeah, sure. So, uh, the Ichi token is basically the governance token of the Ichi platform, right? Uh, the Ichi platform is really what builds out our one token factories and our angel vault factories. So these are uh, basically the angel vaults and branded dollars that we build out for communities. Um, what Ichi does is it starts by governing some of these uh, one token treasuries uh, and then hands them off to their communities. But uh, continues to provide risk parameters 
for ensuring the health of these branded dollars and the, uh, the management of some of these angel vaults. Um, holding the Ichi token, with the Ichi token, you can do a few things. You can, um, what you can do is you can stake it and earn X Ichi, uh, which basically as these angel vaults grow and these branded dollars grow, pays out uh, Ichi into this staked Ichi contract. And the, uh, and the ratio of Ichi to X Ichi grows. So as an X Ichi holder, you have the ability to uh, propose and vote on different kinds of uh, proposals within the Ichi community around launching new branded dollars, uh, around uh, incentives on creating new products within the Ichi community and how that grows, as well as the way the branded dollars are governed until they're handed off to their respective communities and uh, the different risk parameters for those respective communities. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I hope that that narrowed in on, on your question to kind of give you, you know, more understanding of why we'd want to hold the Ichi token. Um, if not, you know, go over to their, uh, their website and you'll be able to understand in detail. We, all of the documentation is out there. I've read through it. Um, so, so very much so to take a look at it. Um, so there's a, this is a very interesting question as well here. Uh, they were comparing something like DAI, um, how you have to over collateralize or collateralize with Ethereum in order to, to mint DAI. Um, how is Ichi solving this problem in a sense of like, is this a USDC or a tether stable coin or is it more so, um, do you have to collateralize I guess the, the question is, can they get more detail on how to solve the bottleneck of having uh, users to overpay or collateralize to receive a stable, co stable coin? Yeah, so uh, a lot of times we see uh, these stable, the different kinds of stable coins out there and uh, the, the, I guess some of the models that are out there tend to be um, you know, algorithmic as well as uh, fiat backed. So Ichi kind of takes a different approach with our branded dollars. Um, and really, uh, in, in the case of DAI per se, uh, in that specific case, you're basically taking out uh, a lending position, right? Um, what and, and you have to pay uh, a larger amount of money, right? It's not capital efficient. You're dropping 150 percent, let's say. Uh, in order to mint back a single die, what Ichi does is it enables people to be uh, and DeFi users to be extremely capital efficient. You deposit a dollar worth of different tokens in, you get back a dollar, right? And on top of that, when you deposit that dollar in, you're really holding your community's token as opposed to uh, selling it or having the uh, the risk of being liquidated by providing a, a larger number, a, a higher amount of, uh, of crypto. So in other words, it's locking in your crypto, your community crypto, as opposed to selling it to get, uh, to get a stable coin. And on top of that, you are capital efficient by providing a dollar of value in, getting a dollar of value out, and being able to use that uh, to both, uh, as both a stable asset as well as a governance asset of the treasury of your stable token backing that. Gotcha. 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 Um, yeah, I have a, uh, a question that I think uh, both sides will enjoy uh, answering or, I guess, navigating through. Um, I guess it's uh, Reese or Rice uh, dropped in the chat. He said, I would love to hear any news on a potential airdrop and what are the requirements? Um, I like. I would have liked to th to know and be on board for both the Fuse ecosystem and uh, the Ichi so Ichi um, uh, application. So, so tell me. I guess we'll start with uh, Rob on on our end. Um, is there any projects right now that are looking forward to doing an airdrop? Um, and what would be the requirements for being a part of that? And kind of dance around that one for us. Um, it's always a bit of a challenging one, isn't it? Uh, good question, Reese. The thing is with airdrops is that 
um, if you know exactly what the uh, the details of an airdrop are going to be before they happen, then it kind of allows you to uh, sort of game the system a little bit. So we can't provide any information on that. Um, you know, this is this is crypto. Airdrops are common. Um, there's uh, you know there's always a chance, and as you've probably seen, many of you probably seen, there is a new token launching soon within the Fuse ecosystem. We are launching a DAO to take DeFi to the mainstream to take. Uh, the, the, the power of DeFi to the next billion people. Um, the killer app there is Fuse Cash, which leverages the liquidity and, um, and, and, and asset sort of diversity in FuseFi to be able to take these, uh, the, these benefits uh, mainstream. Um, the Vault token will launch um, in, the, in the near future. Um, I would encourage people to continue to explore the ecosystem, continue to use the products to trade, to swap, to lend, to, um, to, to transact in, in Fuse Cash. Um, and then, of course, to, to see what happens, basically. Um, so, uh, not too much ambiguity there. Uh, you can, um, yeah, stay tuned, basically. Daniel, did you want to touch on that? Is there any potential airdrops without uh, showing your hand too much here? Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't say there's any, uh, no airdrops on, on our end, I think. Uh, there are going to be interesting collaborations. Uh, I will post a little bit more on the future of Ichi uh, in the chat once I can write some messages in there. Uh, but for potential airdrops, uh, no, no comment for now. Gotcha. Uh, this kind of rolls us right into our next question. Um, so Dex New Schultz says, uh, is this your project only for elite investors? Um, how about others with small funds? Is this, is Ichi open to everyone? Yeah, of course. So um, I think it depends on <laughs> what you mean by everyone, what you mean by small funds. I, I, I think maybe the main issue that's uh, kind of being addressed here is the fact that on Ethereum, fees are super high right now. Uh, and it may feel like it's not worth moving money around if it's not in large quantities because of those high fees. Um, so it kind of speaks to some of our, uh, you know, our our view and, and kind of thoughts for the future of Ichi. I think um, at Ichi, we, you know, we believe that the future is definitely going to be multi-chain um, with most of the uh, financial infrastructure settling on Ethereum mainnet. Uh, with, with that in mind, what we're really building today is kind of this base foundational infrastructure on mainnet and allowing these different communities to create uh, one tokens and branded dollars and um, angel vaults with Uniswap V3. Um, and in the future, what we see and specifically touching on the Fuse network is taking these branded dollars, specifically one Fuse, um, and bridging them over to the Fuse network so that it can be used. Uh, really, I, I kind of see the future as people not having to worry about uh, minting uh, and and these angel vaults. Maybe this will be something that protocols will do for their users in order to keep uh, the health of their tokens. Um, and users will only have to use, uh, let's say, FuseFi and, uh, and the one Fuse token, which is backing sort of the stable assets there. So... The I guess all of that to say uh, today, yeah, Ethereum fees are are pretty high, and that may be somewhat of a of a blocker for some people. But we are definitely open. Anyone can use us today. Uh, we want everyone to use us, um, and our future outlook is enabling these crypto communities to grow, uh, strengthen their financial infrastructure, and enable anyone to uh, gain the benefits that. Ichi's uh, infrastructure uh, products provide. Awesome. Um, yeah, I want to take probably three or four more questions. Um, these are geared more towards, I guess, both projects. Um, so Anna, uh, I guess a part of the Dragon Battles, not, not sure what Dragon Battles is, but um, she, her question is, what's your main focus right now? Are you focused on the community? or the market slash exchange. Um, and in terms, I guess, for both of us, I think her question is, 
are are we more focused on just building or are we more focused on how do we engage with the community um, and how can they kind of propel us to where we want to go? Um, and this is a kind of a chicken and egg situation because you have to build something in order to have a community. So I'll let uh, Rob speak on that one to start. Yes, thanks for the question, Anna. Um, there are, there's a, there's a few big focuses. Obviously, it's community. Um, obviously, it's, um, it's, it's building. It's very much both. Um, I'd say there are, there are sort of three or four big, big things that, um, that, we're, that we're focused on as part of the Fuse ecosystem. Um, it's always about community, and it has been from the start with Fuse. Um, if you go back and look at the, the history of Fuse, which was launched over uh, two and a half years ago now, um, and Mark, of course, coming from a, um, you know, he's been focused on doing this very thing of taking, um, of using this technology to, um, to benefit local economies and to, to benefit communities um, since way before Fuse, when he uh, co-founded Coloop, which was focused on creating um, local currencies for municipalities. So back in the day, they did the uh, Liverpool pound, they did the Tel Aviv uh, shekel, um, and uh, I think another one in uh, in the UK as well, and that company has continued to do the same thing. Um, it's it's very sort of uh, it's a very community led project, and it's something that you know it's it's, it's at the core of what we're uh, of what we of what we do here. Um, the second thing is you know it's 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 liquidity and asset diversity within the Fuse ecosystem. Once again, means to an end because that's what allows us to take these benefits to the mainstream. Um, one other big thing I would say is uh, is, is interoperability. Uh, Fuse is an L1. We're not in any way trying to compete um, or to be an Ethereum killer, right? Like other uh, L1s will um, claim to try and do. We very much see ourselves as being part of a, a, a wider ecosystem with multiple different um, L1s, multiple different blockchains, and then also multiple different um, DeFi protocols. Um, we want to continue to work with these um, other L1s and, and, and DeFi protocols and products generally. Um, in order to, you know, to, 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 to benefit users in the best way possible. Um, so I'd say, yeah, it's really, you know, it's, I'd say they're, they're some of the, the big things that we're focused on. Um, the community, of course, always um, growing liquidity on the, on the platform and really sort of positioning Fuse as a leading um, platform, as a leading, uh, leading ecosystem. Um, and um, as part of that, interoperability is a massive, massive part of our, our strategy. I appreciate your, your take on that, Rob. Um, Daniel, once again, I want to pass the same question over to you. If you, You're welcome to pass on it. I have a couple of other things that I uh, want to touch on as well. But if you want to... You... Yeah, I'll just go really quick and say um, totally agree with what Rob said. Community first, especially in this space. Um, I think community can be a mixture of different things, whether it's end user community, whether it's crypto partner communities um, and enabling them. So um, for us, it's really enabling our partners and building out these communities uh, to, to ensure that at the end of the day, these end users have exactly what they need and are able to um, abstract away all the difficulties. As you know, today it's um, pretty complex to get into the DeFi space and understand how to move around money and use it um, and, and just get started with creating, you know, even something as simple as a MetaMask wallet. So um, at the end of the day, I think it's all about community. It's all about simplifying these things and making the user experience as great as possible, whether that's building that out through different communities um, or building out, you know, infrastructure to enable those communities to uh, continue to simplify the experience for newcomers. Definitely, for sure. Um, I see this this question popped up like quite a few times here in the chat. I've been sifting through most of it. Um, so they somebody is a uh, fair of smoke. There it goes. Regarding the safety and security of your platform, what are the security measures adopted, and have you done any, any audits of the smart contracts? Um, I guess as a whole. Uh, We'll bounce that to Ichi, and then we can, you know, Carl, I guess, can touch on it for a few. Yeah, sure. Um, on our end, uh, obviously, there's always risks in 
uh, depositing your um, assets and money into uh, any kind of smart contract. Uh, at Ichi, we take security super seriously. We have a, a co-founder of a security firm, a security audit firm, uh, building most of our contracts. Uh, and then on top of that, we also get all of our contracts audited before deploying them uh, to production. So those can all be seen directly in on our uh, docs page. Um, you can see all the audits for all our uh, for all of our different smart contracts. Again, all that to say um, that we take security seriously and that uh, smart contracts. There are risks in depositing your funds into smart contracts, but we understand those risks and and we try to tackle them as best as possible. Um, and then lastly, on top of all that, we also do have bounty programs to make sure we have uh, white hat hackers come and uh, check those out. If they find any kind of vulnerability, they come to us first uh, before, you know, trying to uh, exploit that for any kind of um, any kind of financial gain. Of course, of course. Um, Carl, did you want to add in Carl still in or not? If you wanted to touch on. Or I guess Rob, you can you can speak on it. Yeah, I'll take it. This call has now jumped onto another uh, into another meeting. Um, same thing essentially. Um, we obviously work heavily with uh, multiple different auditing firms um, when launching Fuse Network itself, and we continue to do um, a bounty programs, etc. Um, there's another audit taking place as we speak um, for the V5. Uses a uh, for the Fuse Five sort of DeFi product suite. Um, it's it's true that you get different levels of sort of risk taking, right? In this space, you get the projects out there that are sort of at the forefront of of uh, you know of, of, of risk taking, essentially, that are really sort of putting together crazy uh, crazy ideas, crazy concepts, and, and testing them. There is a huge sort of battle testing element to this industry. Uh, it makes it fun. Um, it makes it um, highly innovative. Um, we're not necessarily trying to be at the forefront of the, you know, the crazy DeFi, um, you know, risk-taking um, uh, sort of, you know, spectrum. We see what's happening in the industry and we um, we, we iterate basically and see, see it. You know, our objective is to do things that are highly innovative, but whilst ensuring the safety of users, especially given our mainstream um, approach, our mainstream focus um when it comes to when it comes to uh to, to crypto so you know it's 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 a bit, everything's audited um but we're also not big risk takers anyway of course of course play it safe <laughs> um so this is the last question i'm going to throw out there to both daniel and rob um this was sh showed up i don't know maybe eight to ten times um, Master Machine Learning and Ken uh, Lee High, she, I assume, um, answer, they asked the similar question. So I'll just start with uh, Master Machine Learning's question. He says, the staking program is very important for any project. Uh, can I stake your token? And do you have a plan on starting a staking program? So I'm assuming in this particular case um, for Rob, He's referring to both the uh, Volt token and the Fuse token. And uh, for Daniel, I'm assuming he's referring to the ET token. So I guess, Rob, you can start off. Fuse Network is a DPoS platform. It's delegated proof of stake. So uh, staking is a core, core element to, to Fuse Network. Um, people who stake, whether they run a validator, i.e. you're running a machine, essentially, which is securing the network, or whether you delegate, i.e. you have tokens and you give them, you know, give them, but you stake them with another validator whilst keeping custody. Um, you are, by doing that, you are taking part in securing the network and also in governance. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's one of the core um, elements of the, uh, of, of a Fuse network. Um, and currently by staking your Fuse tokens as a delegate, um, you'll be getting around 25%, I believe, um, APR. Um, it's made to be attractive. These are still early days. Um, so, yes, you can definitely stake your Fuse. Go to staking.fuse.io. Um, you can also go to stakingrewards.com, one of the partners we work with, um, and get more information generally about the, uh, the metrics, essentially, um, of staking on, on Fuse. 
um, Fuse Phi, when the vault governance token um, goes live, will also have a staking mechanism to it. More information will come on that. Awesome. Awesome. Daniel. Awesome. You can go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, so on our end, um, yes, staking is available. I think I touched on this a little bit earlier, but if you go to app.ichi.org, um, you can stake your Ichi for X Ichi, which gives you the ability to govern um, the Ichi network and protocol. Um, additionally, with these angel vaults, you can farm or stake your LP and earn Fuse rewards. And really what that is doing is allowing people to, uh, it, it's basically incentivizing people to provide buy pressure on the Fuse token uh, and create protocol owned liquidity for Fuse. So yes, staking is possible. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. Um, and you can go to app.ichi.org uh, to learn more. Awesome, Daniel. I appreciate you clarifying that. I saw that question asked very frequently uh, throughout the chat. Where can I buy the token at? Um, so, and I and if you're referring to um, the Fuse token, we're on Gate.io. If you go to CoinGecko, it'll give you a list of all the uh, all the different exchanges we're on. Uh, if you're looking in terms of just buying it on the Dex, we're on Uniswap. You can also get it through the Fuse uh, FuseFi application on the Fuse network. Um, we, we have a lot of different ways to access the fuse token, um, in terms of, do you want to give us any more details, Daniel, on where exactly you can buy the Ichi token? Um, and, and then we'll kind of conclude this AMA. Yeah, sure. Um, I think, uh, Misha just posted on the chat. Uh, there's a few links there from, uh, our website to our docs, uh, and to learn a little bit more, uh, you can buy Ichi on uh, SushiSwap, on Bancor, and you can see that within our documentation, there's a tab for uh, where to get Ichi. Um, so you can go there, you can find out how to get more. Uh, and uh, yeah, just want to say uh, super grateful for the opportunity to speak here and uh, you know, partnering with Fuse is super, super awesome. It's been great working with you all. And um, I know we're 2022 is going to be a big year for us both. So uh, excited for what the future holds. Thank you, Dan, for coming on. Um, Rob, did you want to say anything? Uh, thank you, first of all, Zach, for uh, for, for, for moderating and, uh, and for an awesome uh, AMA. And yeah, we've been working with each of you guys for a while now. Um, it's sort of our, one of our strongest partnerships. Um, one of our strongest collaborations. Um, it's been a very pleasurable uh, experience so far, and yeah, so, like, you know, I sort of uh, I, I I copy what um, I uh, I copy basically. It's going to be great, you know, a great sort of uh, 2022 moving forward. Once again, stable coins are a very very important part of um, of our of our strategy, um, and what we are doing is um, very innovative, and uh, yeah, we're excited for what's to uh, for the future of this partnership. Of course. Uh, for those of you who asked questions in this AMA, I've been kind of keeping a running running tally. Uh, we're going to pick the top three questions and we're going to announce them on Twitter, on our Twitter page for uh, a reward. So I appreciate all of you who hopped on and uh, took the time out of your day this morning to uh, listen in on what we had to say between Ichi and, and Fuse. We're planning to do something along this lines, more than likely an AMA or an interview uh, at least once a week, I'm going to try to, you know, make that initiative and push for that every, every week, uh, going forward. We just have so much moving in the ecosystem and it's, it's good to give everyone insight on what's happening. So, you know, we are working, we are moving. This isn't, you know, uh, kind of, uh, we're not really dragging our feet. Um, but once again, I appreciate everyone who came on and we'll, we have recorded this. So this will be pushed out on our YouTube a little bit later. Uh, if not today, it'll be first thing tomorrow. So thank you, everyone. And once again, uh, Rob and Dan, thank you for the time. Uh, and then that, that's it. Thanks again, everyone.